Hi everyone, um, thanks again for, for taking the time to stop by and watch a video uh, and also thanks to those people who have taken the time to post a comment uh, on previous videos uh, and obviously to those who have uh, also subscribed, uh, I appreciate it and hopefully I can supply you with a few more videos uh, which will, will be of interest. Um, what we've got here is obviously a, a lineup of different um, handhelds um, that, I, that I have in my possession uh, that are mine and uh, I'm, I'm kind of planning on, on you know doing a few reviews now I don't particularly like the, the word review but uh, it's pretty much going to be you know hands on my opinion of those not going to be particularly particularly uh, technically uh, oriented uh, it's more just about you know carrying how I find them uh, rather about the, the individual specs of the item which I might throw in here and there um, <clears throat> but because I'm a relatively new ham um, it, it, the the info that I'm going to provide um, it is going to be fairly sort of um, you know layman oriented uh, you know just talking about uh, the different accessories that uh, come with the different items uh, you know what come with them originally when they were packaged um, how I find them to carry uh, and and you know how I find them in general <coughs> um, I am just going to quickly touch on a few of the questions that were asked of me read the UV3R um, because uh, but, yeah, people are taking the time to ask questions, so hopefully um, I can answer a few of those uh, just off the top uh, before we get stuck in, and I, I give you a rundown on the different um, HCs that we've got here. Um, so one question that comes up a couple of times, uh, and a few people have sent me, is: Is the UV3R a good first-time rig uh, for somebody looking to get into ham radio? Um, my my answer is probably not. Uh, it is limited to two watts. Um, and I think, to be honest, if you started with two watts, uh, you, you're probably going to get more frustrated than anything else um, and not be able to make a lot of contacts. You certainly probably won't be making any contact simplex, which is from radio direct to radio. Um, even you have difficulty with the five watts with, with all the other rigs, um, especially in sort of a suburban area. Uh, if you, you're know, covering sort of uh, open ground and you're, you're out in the country you, you might have a bit more luck or your, your position is up high but basically just sort of around town you're not going to make a lot of um, direct or simplex contacts radio to radio with this unit it is handy though um, for getting into repeaters um, now one of the questions was what's a repeater now basically a repeater is an, another as a tower effectively um, which will rebroadcast your signal out um, typically at a, at a greater power um, and you can then communicate to other people through that repeater so basically takes your signal rebroadcasts it um, and then when they communicate back they communicate through that repeater and back to you um, and their signal is rebroadcast back to you that, that's very simple but that's that's effectively what it is in basic terms um, so if you're in a, a location where you can talk into the repeater typically repeaters are set up very high you'll find them on a local hill or a mountain or something along those lines set up very high which increases your chances of being able to get to that line of sight so quite often two watts is sufficient to get into that repeater and then have your signal broadcast at the other end and uh, make a few contacts that way and you will tend to find that a lot of ham radio operators or amateurs uh, and even CBs will communicate via uh, repeaters because it, it greatly extends your range and uh, you know the chances of making a contact or having a more successful contact um, without you know degradation in signals etc <clears throat> so good for that perspective look if if you've got uh, if you're limited funds um, this is all you can get your hands on fantastic go for it uh, you know get a start with it please keep in mind that um, there, there are limitations with it though um, and, and and it is a low power rig um, <clears throat> it would be handy for learning um, how to operate a radio on, in, in basic terms um, and, and maybe making a few contacts maybe uh, wet your appetite as such but it, it's um, probably not the, 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 the best rig to go with first off but if that's where you can get go for it um, <clears throat> uh, somebody asked about uh, PMR um, and they quoted me a uh, I think it was lol lu lol um, quoted me a frequency of 446 meg.006 um, the lowest frequency step you can actually get is 5 kilohertz on this so you can't actually get 
446006. I'm not sure whether that was a typo, mate. I'm sorry, I don't know what PMR is um, or what that frequencies are or, or the frequency steps required. Um, but there it is on 446005. Um, I've got that on low power, but you can see it's actually transmitting on that. Um, it will transmit um, all the way from 136 up to 174 on VHF, and it will transmit 400 to 470 meg on UHF. <clears throat> Uh, another question was will it transmit or go up above 470 um, in Australia our UHF CB is around 477 mark answer is no it'll transmit all the way between those frequencies 136 to 174 400 to 470 but will not transmit or receive outside of those frequencies um, it's open all the way in between those typically as your uh, Chinese radios are but it won't transmit outside those frequencies and it's not a wide band receive so won't receive outside those either. Uh, Steve, I think his name is Steve Arish on one of the previous videos, somebody asked me whether it would do cross band. Um, I incorrectly advised that it wouldn't. Um, Steve Arish has come back and corrected me and advised that it will do uh, providing that you have the software to do so. The software provides you some additional functionality to the rig uh, and uh, and apparently you can you can do crossband through that, um, or set the rig up to do crossband. Um, one thing I have noticed just on um, uh, eBay is that the software and the programming cables are becoming available. I think they're from what I can remember. I had a look the other night. I think they're sub twenty odd dollars. So and and more than likely coming from Hong Kong or something like that, which uh, I believe was where the radio came from anyway in the first place. Um, all right. Um, now, uh, Stuntmasters also asked me if I had a chance to field test. Uh, I'm going to have to say no, sorry, mate. I haven't yet. Um, I've only had a, a real brief play with it, uh, pretty much in the backyard. I haven't had a chance to carry out a real decent QSO on it, um, and I am looking to do that hopefully this weekend. Uh, you know, time permitting and all things going well, which kind of leads me to everything that's in the background there. <clears throat> um, these are the rigs that I've got at the moment. Uh, and the ICOM IC91AD has just turned up as of yesterday so this is kind of what's prompted me to want to do a few reviews or you know hands-on experiences of these individual rigs which hopefully will be coming up in the near future uh, and then obviously I'll be able to do a bit of a field test on each of those uh, and, and hopefully report back on on each of those individually including the UV3R um, so obviously based on my previous vids you know the UV3R um, that's about Fifty odd dollars, give or take. Um, it was sub fifty, I think. You know, uh, you have to look at the previous vid. I do apologise, don't remember off the top of my head, but it was a sub fifty rig. Picked it up off eBay, um, dual band, um, and we've covered those frequencies just then. Um, that's not the antenna that it came with originally. It actually comes with two different antennas. Uh, but again, go back and check out the other vids, and there's a bit more detail there. Um, next one in line here um, is a Puxing PX Triple Eight. PX88. This is the VHF variety. Uh, again, somewhere around the 136 to 174. Open through all those frequencies, so we'll transmit uh, across um, that entire frequency range. Also has uh, FM broadcast frequencies, so you can um, listen to FM radio as well. Um, you know, flick backwards and forwards between your frequencies you're monitoring and the X, uh, FM radio. Uh, so WFM, which is quite nice, um, DTMF, uh, keypad, uh, and, and quite a bit of functionality. Uh, again, we'll go into that later. Plenty of information uh, around these on the websites. Um, you know, just just Google Puxing PX88, and you should find plenty of these. Really well-made rig. Um, I think that was around about the hundred-dollar mark. Uh, and again, look, I've, I've had four of these and, and none of them have failed me yet. Uh, I've got, this one's the, uh, just having a quick look, okay, sorry, this is a VHF and I've got two others which are the UHF. Um, still all going really, really well. Had those for probably, uh, probably around about the two year mark. Not a lot of heavy use, um, probably say intermediate on those. Um, so they're not too bad, that's a standard antenna that's come on it. But again, more detail in a video to come. Um, the next one in the line, um, which I have thus far been quite impressed with, other than my bugbear, which you can see there, doesn't like to stand up on its own. The ICOM uh, IC91AD. Um, this is a 
D-Star radio, as you can see there. Again, dual band, uh, and I haven't paid too much attention to the specs on this, um, but is also a wideband scanner. Uh, goes from, I think, 500 kilohertz, uh, don't quote me on this, um, but around about 500 up to about 999 megahertz, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's thereabouts. Uh, also, so obviously that covers your um, broadcast frequencies FM. Also does AM. Uh, haven't tried it on AM transmit, which I don't believe it would work. I believe it's only an FM rig, but will certainly receive. I don't know whether there's any mods out there that will permit it to tra transmit on AM. And to be honest, at this point, uh, I haven't looked. So that's a question I'm going to have to answer for myself. Um, so like I said, D-Star. So it's uh, also analog and digital. Um, I've only just acquired this yesterday, so I haven't had a real good chance to, to have a lot of hands-on experience. I have done some quick backyard tests with the VX8DR, that's a Yaesu, that one, and you can see that there. Um, I've had this for, okay, probably about eight months, give or take, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so this has been my main carryabout rig. Um, made a few contacts, I tend to do a bit of repeater work this way, um, and also some APRS. That was, I guess, uh, what I was interested in most was the APRS aspect of that. And again, when I you know get time to, to go through each of these individual rigs, I'll, I'll cover up off the accessories. Um, you know, walking through the menus, uh, talk about the antennas that come with them, some of the replacement antennas I've got. I'll eventually cover that off as well. Like this one's just a, a Nagoya dual band antenna. Uh, I think you can see it there. It says, uh, what have we got? Uh, 144 and 430. Um, but they tell send it tend to operate uh, on the hand bands up there on two meters. So they, they do a reasonable job of that. Uh, so that's the Nagoya there. Actually, we'll just pop this off. Um, that's the Nagoya on the Icom. Um, the reason I have the Nagoya on the Icom and the Diamond, which actually was given to me with the, the Icom when I purchased it, <coughs> was effectively these are all but the identical antennas, and you'll see the, the model number. What you'll tend to find for those uh, interested is that you'll get, <coughs> excuse me, Diamond is a you know um, well-known antenna maker, uh, and and I'd probably say well-respected as far as um, certainly you know HT rigs and they do home base stuff as well. Um, I'm not sure where uh, Diamond originates from. I'm probably going to say Japan, um, and I think the uh, Nagoya stuff comes from China. Um, again, what you'll see is you'll, you'll generally find a diamond antenna. Um, you know, I think these probably go for around about the you know, twenty-five, thirty dollars. We're talking Australian dollars AUD here. Um, yeah, you know, twenty-five, thirty dollars for for the diamond. Uh, you know, jump on Eham, have a look. Um, Eham's obviously a website with with uh, ham radio gear. Lots of reviews and information. Uh, so a very good site if you you know you're looking to buy one of these rigs or you're looking to buy any other rig, and uh, you know gears, accessory, whatever, jump on Eham, have a look, read the, the, the hands-on reviews of um, for the other guys who have actually have the rigs. Take it with a bit of a grain of salt though, but it's definitely some, some information, some food for thought. Um, so like I was saying, you'll, you'll typically see a, a diamond antenna, um, and then you'll find a, a Nagoya one of, of pretty much the same, like you can see these are pretty much the same length. Um, they're marked for the same, um, same bands, same band frequency coverage. Um, they've even model similar. You can see that the Nagoya is an NA771, so November Alpha 771. You can see that there. Uh, and the Diamond SRH, uh, Sierra Romeo Hotel 771. So, yeah, these are basically knockoffs, and, and they, they tend to do the same job. Um, you'd probably pick up the Nagoya for 15 bucks or below, and, and you'd usually expect that to be delivered for that price as well. Um, <clears throat> are they the same? Thus far, I've, I've found them to be, uh, but hopefully um, I'll get the opportunity to do a few more tests in the next coming weeks or so, and I'll report back on how I find those, even give you the opportunity to listen in, do a few contacts, uh, switch the antennas over, try them on different rigs, see how they go. Both of these ones that I've got here are SMA, the standard SMA connector, as you can see there, with the pin actually on the antenna itself. 
Now those actually fit onto the uh, the icon. Uh, it fits on the Yesu, and I believe, if I remember correctly, yep, bingo. Um, also fits on the little bayer thing as well. What you'll actually find on the, the Puxing though, uh, and the Wuxun or Wuxin or whatever the W O U X O N I think it is, uh, and some of the other Chinese rigs, you'll actually find uh, this, which is a some people refer to it as a reverse SMA connector or a female SMA connector. You can tell that because it's actually got the female of the end of the SMA connector in the antenna itself. Let me just grab the other one here so you can compare it versus the the male pin there in the end of the other one. Uh, so you could probably actually screw those together and you can. Um, and what you'll actually find is the the female actually has the thread on just trying to get that focus thread on the outside there and uh, yep um, and fits into the rig as such not sure if you can see that the female is going inside there and screws in obviously the pin is in the yeah, there we go pin is actually in the socket on the rig itself <sighs> sorry about the dust there uh, so that screws in there like that um, where with the standard SMA, uh, let's go with the VK, sorry the VX, um, you'll actually see the hole in the socket there, um, raise a little bit and the thread is on the outside of the actual socket on the end of the, the radio itself, so let's just put that one back on there, okay, and this one here, so you know, I'll give you some information on, on the antennas as we go as well. Um, I have quite a few of the Nagoya stuff. It, it seems to be very well priced and seems to do the, the, the same job as some of the other uh, antennas. Um, and definitely seems to do a job better than uh, the stock stuff that comes with it. Um, obviously you can see in the length it, it's greater than you know the, the stock stuff that comes. I think that's probably about 15 centimeters, give or take. Um, and the, the Nagoya and the Diamond that I've got there, I think they're in about 28, 30 centimeters, give or take. Um, so that would obviously provide additional gain. This is the stock antenna that came with the, uh, the Yesu. Um, interesting thing about this one is it actually has an additional section on the end, which I don't have out at the moment, um, because the Yesu also covers uh, six meters. Uh, there's a, an additional bit of, on the put on the end, so you can actually cover six meters on that. Um, okay, so with all that said, if you've got any questions on any of the any of the rigs that we've got here, the UV3R, the Puxing PX888, um, the Yesu VX8DR, uh, or the ICOM IC91AD, go easy on me on the D-Star questions, or if you've got any advice regarding the D-Star on this, uh, any opinions on any of these rigs, any opinions on any of the antennas, or any of the accessories that you think, you know, uh, yeah, look, you should really grab one of these. I've, I've got one. They're fantastic. Can't live without it. Certainly let me know. Share your opinions. Um, you know, post up. Um, I'd love this to be a real good knowledge base. Um, I have watched a few other, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, stations, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, uh, Usernet Doc. Um, I, I find his video is very good. Um, KUC200 or something. Um, I, I will get these names right later on. Um, you know, his his um, soda um, summits on the air. His activations have been fantastic. Really enjoy those videos. So um, there's a couple of websites that are uh, sorry, a couple of channels that are, are worth looking out for. Um, you know, I'll also cover off some of the accessories. Uh, this is the mic for the VX8R. And I've got to say, look, I really do love that rig. I just, I love the look of it, but we'll, we'll get more into detail on that later on. Uh, the mic that came with the uh, the Icon 91AD. Uh, look, I, I don't know about you, but that has got to be the least attractive mic I've ever seen. Functionality, I like the fact that you can change bands, you can, you know, go up and down as far as, um, I'm assuming that's a yeah, VFO or for your memories. Got a lockout button on the back. I like that. Not, yeah. The clip's okay. The clip's actually better on the back of that than it is on the back of the the HT itself. You can see that's just a stiff 
metal belt clip there. Don't like that at all. Um, you know, and here's one for uh, the Puxings. You know, 10 bucks, 13 bucks or something, I think that was. Um, it works. Um, it's got a socket on the bottom so you can chuck in a uh, headset if you want to. But again, you know, we'll cover all these when we do the individual rigs. But like I said, if you've got any questions, comments, opinions, um, you know, additional information, whatever you think that I, I should include, uh, feel free to, you know, send me a message, post up on this video, uh, do what you need to do to get the information to me, um, you know, and, and I'd, I'd love to see you guys posting up videos. Um, oh, one other thing, um, I probably also uh, had a few questions regarding the hex beam that I put up a little while ago. It's actually middle of winter here, so it's a bit cool outside, so I haven't been inclined to be outside and, and doing a lot of... Um, filming or just in general be outside um, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw up a video on that as well um, there's a Yaesu FT450 sitting behind that uh, the 8900 in the car um, also just recently acquired the um, the rotator that you see there uh, the Yaesu G450 Alpha um, you know, if you've got any questions on that um, and something else that I'll probably do a video on if I can get this out here, um, is CW or Morse code. Um, I'm looking to, to get stuck into that and uh, you can see a key that I purchased there. I'll give you some information on that later on. Uh, she's a little bit dusty, but is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Um, there's a guy over in the US that makes them um, and uh, he, he actually numbers the bottom of them uh, and that one's number 263. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, craftsmanship second to none the thing weighs an absolute ton um, but but operates just perfectly um, even though with my um, <laughs> ham-fisted attempts uh, most fantastic anyway love that thing um, so if you've got any advice on me on, on how to pick up CW um, you know, and how to learn I, I found some software on the internet found a software on an application for my um, Samsung Galaxy S um, that will actually uh, convert your SMSs um, to CW, to the Morse code. Um, so that, that's interesting and, and hopefully once I get uh, a little bit more proficient, or proficient because I'm not proficient at the moment, um, I'll provide some information on that. So, um, look, at this point, most of the information that I'm going to be throwing up is relating to ham radio. Um, so, like I said, share the knowledge and um, I'll hopefully post up something soon and uh, we'll talk to you then. Cheers, guys.